Hey guys. So today what we're going to try to do is look at cladistics. Now, cladistics literally is simply grouping objects. It's grouping organisms or some sort of other object into a structure. Now, those structures are represented biologically in what we call phylogenetic trees. A phylogenetic tree is a branching diagram that represents not only our organization in terms of a naming system for organisms, but it also reflects the evolutionary history of that organism. So organisms that are properly grouped together, they're going to reflect in the way that they're grouped, they're going to reflect which organisms are most closely related to each other. Now, this is why, for example, mammals are grouped together. Even a flying mammal, like a bat, is grouped much more closely with a mouse than it is with a bird. We're not asking, hey, do these things fly or not? That's not the question that we're using to divide. We're saying, hey, do they have hair? Do they nurse their young? Do they give live birth? Those are questions that are more important in terms of an evolutionary standpoint. Now, that's a little tricky to know which question to ask. Why we've seen evolutionary relationships change over the years. It used to be that whales might not be grouped in the same group as hippopotami. Now they are, because we understand a little bit more about their evolutionary history. Now, to give you guys a better idea of how we might build a cladistic system or a phylogenetic tree, which is what you guys are going to be doing in the lab today, what I'm going to ask you to do is to watch as I build a tree with some objects I found around my house. Let's say, for example, that we want to classify these different fasteners on the basis of their characteristics. What we'd like to do is ask a series of questions that enables us to group them, placing the ones that are most similar to each other into groups and separating out the ones that don't share as many characteristics. Let's see what I mean. Okay, let's put all of these together and start seeing if there are certain things that they all share. Well, one thing that most of them share is some sort of backing. We can see that on the back of this bolt or the back of this screw, there's sort of a wide flared piece. Now, in this cotter pin, there's no backing, no flat backing. So that makes this one quite different than the rest. And in our phylogenetic tree, we might say that this one has split off first. Now, the question we could use, we could say, do we have a flat backing? And this would be no. No, we don't. This would be yes. Yes, we do. So we'd separate the groups into those two on the basis of this question. So this question right here is, is there a flat end? That would be the question we're asking, and we're separating these two into two separate groups. All of these over here have this flat end, this one doesn't. Now, if we want to separate these further, we have to ask more questions. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is what question you ask is a little bit tricky. There are probably a lot that we could ask. But what I'm going to try to do right now is to ask one in particular. For example, do they have threads? Might be hard to see, but this little black one has threads. This one certainly has threads. These have threads. So all these four have threads. This nail doesn't. So once again, we can split into two groups. We can say, are there threads? Yes or no. So yes, there are threads over here. And no, there aren't threads here. By asking another question, we could split things further. For example, we could say, on the end, on this flat end, are there marks? So on that Phillips head screw there are. Same way here. This black one. Yep, there's a head to it. On this one, though, there is no indentation, no mark cut into the end of the screw. So once again, we could probably say that these three, the black one and these two other ones, 
these are probably more closely related to each other than this one. So let's split again on the basis of a driver head. So these would have yes, these would have no. So this would be the presence or absence of something a screwdriver could act upon. I'm not going to bother writing down the question, partially just because I can't write it that small. You get the idea. Now, if we move forward, let's try to separate these. Well, let's take a look. This little black one, don't know if the camera will focus, but you can see that it has a standard head. These two, they have a Phillips head. So once again, these are probably a little bit more similar. Phil, stay still. These are a little bit more similar than this one. So we could once again split and say, do we have a Phillips head or regular? So Phillips or flat. And now with these two Phillips head screws, let's think of something to separate them. Well, I would probably say, does it have a coating? This one that keeps running away. This has some sort of coating. This one doesn't. So I'm going to split them apart on the basis of that question. And I'm going to leave this little flathead one over here, if I can make it go. And so now we're going to split these apart and say, coating, yes or no. Oh, that's so sad. Fail. Tell you what, we're just going to set it like that. So we could say coding, yes or no. Now, by doing this, we've separated this tree, and we're saying that this cotter pin is the most dissimilar from any of these others. All, all these others are more closely related to each other than they are to this cotter pin. All of these that have threads are more closely related to each other than this nail. Now, if these were actual species, we'd be, we'd be showing their phylogenetic, in other words, their evolutionary relationships with each other. Now, if we think about it, the way that we've asked this question is really, really important, and the order that we ask these questions are really, really important. For example, if we ask these questions in a different order, we could come up with a very, very different grouping. If I ask the question about, is there a coding at this stage, instead of saying, is it Phillips head or flat head? Well, all of a sudden, we'd be grouping this all-weather screw that's right here. We'd be grouping that with this plastic-coated flathead screw. And it would be this one that would be the outlier. So all of a sudden, we'd class these two as more similar to each other. And we'd be placing this one apart. So the order in which we ask these questions is really important. And the questions that we ask are also very, very important. So it may be that one of the reasons that we see evolutionary relationships constantly being questioned and constantly sometimes being overturned is the fact that we're understanding better which questions to ask. And this is one of the reasons why scientists look more and more, instead of at physical characteristics, they look more and more at the genetics of organisms. So in the example we just looked at, we grouped all of the objects that had threads together because they shared a common characteristic. That derived shared characteristic is probably an example of a homology. That homologous characteristic was shared amongst all of those organisms because they inherited it from a common ancestor. For that reason, if we look at a properly constructed system of phylogeny, it probably reflects evolutionary relationships. However, there can be problems because very often you can have convergent evolution. Now in convergent evolution, we get analogous structures, not homologous structures. For example, we might see that a bird and a bee both have wings, but that doesn't mean that they got their wings from a common ancestor. Bird wings and bee wings are built very differently. They don't share that homology that you would get from a bird wing and, say, 
the forelimb of a human. Those are homologous structures. They have the same component parts and they do indeed come from a common ancestor. So sometimes convergent evolution can really confuse things. And sometimes even the best biologists can get a little bit confused and can build structures that are different. Now in the lab that you guys are doing today, I'm actually gonna ask you to go back once you have it built, once you have your phylo phylogenetic tree set up, I'm gonna ask you to go back and try to ask different questions and look at how different your tree might be. Now, this is why scientists are constantly rethinking evolutionary relationships. And this is one of the reasons that scientists re properly refer to evolution as a theory. Now, again, like we said, it's not a theory like, oh gosh, it might not be accurate in any way. It's a theory in that the way we understand it today, the details of how we understand it might be a little bit different in the future. So good luck as you work on your lab. And don't forget to let us know if you have any questions. You can always contact us in office hours or via email. Take care and good luck, guys.